Greetings to all of you, my dear students. So in this uh, third session on anti-epileptic threats, we are going to discuss something about newer anti-epileptic threats. So let us get into the details now. So what are these newer anti-epileptic threats? Let us see. The advantages of these molecules when compared to the conventional drugs are they have simple pharmacokinetic profile and because of which they do have less drug interactions and of course improved tolerability but the main disadvantage with these molecules I, is they are highly expensive so coming to the molecules one after another so to start with bigger battery so this is like i have given a mnemonic in the name itself so we'll get into that so bigger battery means here the mechanism of action of this molecule is it inhibits GABA transaminase enzyme because of which the GABA metabolism is inhibited. So more amount of GABA molecule is available for anti-epileptic action. That is the main mechanism of action. Then coming to the pharmacokinetics, it is not metabolized but is excreted unchanged in the urine. Half-life is six to eight hours. But the pharmacodynamic activity of the drug is more prolonged but not well correlated with the plasma half life. Okay, so because of which the recovery from the drug required synthesis of replacement of GABA T enzyme. So it is like aspirin, irreversible inhibition, a kind of that thing. So unless and until the GABA transaminase enzyme is resynthesized, the action will prolong for a long period of time. So it is like hit and run drug. So you may be asked in Viva OC for both undergraduates and postgraduates, what are the hit and run drug molecules? Give examples for that. So this molecule also comes in the, that category. So it is like R means hit and run drug. Then peripheral retinal atrophy, irreversible retinal dysfunction leading to permanent bilateral concentric visual field constriction. Otherwise, it can give rise to a kind of tubular vision to the patient. That is often asymptomatic but can be disabling. So because of which it is not that routinely used molecule. Then it should not be used in patients with pre-existing visual field defects because of this complaint. And also in children suffering from infantile spasm in whom visual field monitoring is not possible. It's very small children and we cannot uh, monitor that uh, particular side effect. So it is contraindicated in infants also. And apart from the peripheral retinal atrophy, it also produces central retinal damage also. Then behavioral changes also it produces, like psychic uh, symptoms like drowsiness, depression, along with memory disturbances. Then uh, diplopia, along with behavioral changes. Then uh, sedation, amnesia. Of course, sedation, majority of the newer anti-epileptic drugs produce sedation, but uh, one molecule produces insomnia, which we are going to discuss about it. So, but the sedation is when compared to the conventional drugs, it varies. That is one kind of advantage that we can see. And then the weight gain and few molecules produce weight loss also. Okay, this is the predominating, predominating different differentiating features that the molecules do have. So when you come to the pharmacokinetics, the main predominating differentiating feature you try to remember, that's it. So you need not remember the all the salient aspects like other aspects also. Okay, then weight gain and vacillation of myelin sheath. Then because of this visual field contraction side effects along with color vision and parasitias, it is restricted to use only for, uh, as a reserve drug only for the resistant epilepsy. So B for behavioral changes and R for hit and run drug and then reservoir drug. Then it is used in the management of infantile spasms so dose is 50 to 150 milligrams per kg per day so if you can remember the dose that is well and good if you don't uh, if you can't remember the dose no problem with the uh, newer anti-epileptic drugs whereas for the conventional drugs you need to remember the dose okay and adults 500 mg twice daily total of two to three grams per day may be required for full effectiveness the therapeutic indications are focal seizures but not generalized seizures and also infantile spasms but rarely because of the area. Because it may cause irreversible visual loss, it is usually reserved for refractory epilepsy. And contraindications are absence epilepsy or myoclonic seizures. So here are the uh, mnemonic features, that is V for visual field defects, 
Sentinel syndrome and diplopia also comes under this. And central retinal atrophy and then peripheral retinal atrophy, visual cube defects. Then B for behavioral changes giving rise to uh, depression. Then T for inhibition of transaminase enzyme, GABA transaminase, and tunnel vision. And R for retinal atrophy, which is uh, central and peripheral as well. And it is reserved drug for the resistant epilepsy case and hidden drug. drug. So this is the mnemonic that I would like to give. Then going to the, another molecule that is diagabin. So this diagabin, so you remember in our previous uh, session also, we have discussed about this diagram. So it is going to inhibit the reuptake. So get reuptake. That is the main mechanism of action. So more amount of GABA is available for the anti-epileptic action. Then coming to the pharmacokinetics, bioavailability of 90 to 100%. Then food delays its absorption, highly protein bound, half life is five to eight hours, and a decrease in the presence of enzyme induced impacts. And it undergoes hepatic metabolism, eliminated in both feces and urine. Those may be reduced in poor hepatic function. Then ADR. So, apart from these, are the general ADR dizziness, fatigue sedation, tremors, confusion, nervousness, asthenia, amnesia, dermatitis, abdominal pain. These are all the general uh, area. And apart from that, this molecule also produces lack of concentration and depression also. Rash is idiosyncratic reaction and psychosis is rare. Okay, so rash you will be seeing most commonly. And then conversions also. T for tremors like that you can remember. Tremors means a kind of conversions. So it may occur when taken for non-epileptic conditions. So it has to be used very carefully. Then dose, is to be, dose to be used is 20 to 60 milligrams per day in three to four equally divided doses. Then uses mainly as add-on drug for the treatment of partial seizures with or without secondary generalization in adolescents and adults. Then urgent drug for refractory complex epilepsy. Contraindications are generalized onset epilepsy and Diagabin should not be used for indications other than epilepsy because this molecule induces uh, particularly convulsions when used for non-epileptic conditions. Then gabapentinoids. So gabapentin and pregabalin both together collectively are known as gabapentinoids. These are amino acid-like molecules that were originally synthesized as analogs of GABA but are now known to act through not to act through GABA mechanisms. So they, they were uh, supposed to be like GABA analogs, but now the latest theory is, theory is that they are not acting through GABA mechanisms. So what is the mechanism of action then? So despite their structural, close structural resemblance to GABA, GABA pentinoids do not act through effects on GABA receptors. So they do not act on GABA receptors, okay. Or, any other mechanism related to GABA-mediated neurotransmission. So what is the mechanism of action? So they bind to alpha to delta, a protein that serves as an axillary subunit of voltage-gated calcium channels. Okay, so that is like alpha to delta is a protein that is connected to the voltage-gated calcium channels. So it, uh, this molecule, these molecules go and combine with that particular protein. So because of the combination, so there is a possibility of decreasing glutamate release at excitatory synapses. That's how it produces its uh, anti-epileptic action. Then coming to the pharmacokinetics, they're not metabolized and do not induce hepatic enzymes, but eliminated and changed in the urine. Both drugs are absorbed by the L-amino acid transport system, which is found only in the upper small intestine. Oral bioavailability of gabapentin decreases with increasing dose because of the saturation of the transport system, that is L-amino acid transport system. This is a very particular point, so you need to remember regarding the gabapentin, okay? Then, in contrast, pregabalin exhibits linear absorption within the therapeutic dose range. That is a saturation, and this is the linear absorption. So pregabalin is used at much lower dose than gabapentin, so it does not saturate the transport system. Okay, non-saturating. 
then pregabalin may be absorbed by mechanisms at the that the levo amino acid transport system which we are not mentioning here it is not discussed uh, i'm not going to discuss about it uh, at this level then because of dependence on the transport system absorption of gabapentin shows patient to patient variability and dosing requires individual individualization that is the difference between gabapentin and pregabalin so that is saturating system of pharmacokinetics and this is not saturating system whereas it follows linear pharmacokinetics so because of the saturating phenomenon there is a patient to patient variation in the response so we need to adjust the dose individually then they are not bound to plasma proteins drug to drug interactions are negligible half life is relatively short for gabapentin it is 5 to 8 hours and pregabalin it is 4 four and half to 7 hours they are typically administered two to three times a day because of their short half life and both can cause weight gain and peripheral edema dosage adjustments are needed for renal dysfunction uses are in focal seizures somewhat less effective so better molecules we do have the non epileptic indications i'm giving the mnemonic that is the rap the wrapping you know no? so the rap and f so r for restless leg syndrome then uh, a for anxiety disorders and p for post hepatic neuralgia and painful diabetic neuropathy and then f means fibromyalgia specifically pregabalin molecule is used for this particular condition then so this is these are the common features of gabapentinides both gabapentin and pregabalin but both of the molecules have some different peculiar features which i'm going to discuss now so gabapentin was developed as spasmolytic in the beginning later they found to have they found that this molecule has anti convulsant property regarding the pharmacokinetics the special feature of this molecule is it is uh, uh, having a pro drug that is gabapentin enacarbid so from which the gabapentin molecule is released oral bioavailability is 50% and exhibits non linear pharmacokinetics due to its uptake by saturnal transport system from the gut that's what we have already discussed mechanism of action gaba analog increases gaba concentration by affecting gaba metabolism and it's non synaptic release and it's uptake by gaba transporter but does not act on gaba e receptor it combines with alpha 2 delta subunit of voltage gated calcium channel so because of which the blockade of the calcium channels no calcium entry so reduce synaptic release of glutamate and hence reduced excitotoxicity so prodrug gabapentin enacarbil is uh, used as extended release formulation so that we can have because it is having short half life this extended release formulation can be used because the prodrug molecule is also available so this prodrug is actively absorbed by high capacity nutrient transporters which are abundant throughout the intestinal tract then converted to gabapentin within the intestine so anywhere it can get metabolized so there is dose proportional systemic gabapentin exposure over a wide dosage range okay then half life 5 to 9 hours used in hepatic dysfunction also drug interactions are minimal so it can be used safely along with the enzyme inducer anti epileptic such as phenobarbital and phenytoin okay then it is a good choice for people with high risk of drug interaction such as older patient so because of less possibility of uh, drug interactions area apart from all the general or routine manifestations like uh, somnolence headache dizziness attack attacks yeah fatigue tremors blurred vision this molecule produces vertigo and apart from the tolerance develops for this all these side effects then high doses can lead to weight gain of the patient and indications are adjuvant for partial seizures with or without secondary generalization resistant to other drug therapy that is resistant variety of epilepsy and then generalized tonic clonic seizures and other indications for gabapentin molecule the, the mnemonic that i would like to give here is spm and n social and preventive medicine and n s for acute muscle spasm P for phobic states, M for migraine, and N for neuropathic pains. It could be due to either diabetes mellitus, post-hepatic neuralgia. Okay, so that is a drug of choice for neuropathic conditions, gabapentin. And fibromyalgia, for fibromyalgia, the drug of choice is pregabalin. 
Contraindications, absence seizures and myoclonic seizures and sustained release formulation that we have discussed already. So because of which once in a daily, once a day administration can be uh, available. Then dose to be given is 100 mg TID increased gradually to 900 to 1200 mg per day. Then pregabalin, newer congener of gabapentin related chemically to gabapentin, bioavailability is 90% and half-life is 6 to 8 hours. It is also a GABA analog and acts by increasing GABA concentration in brain under the mechanism similar to GABA printing. ADR similar and apart from that rashes and allergic reactions and of course weight gain and ataxia same is the case. Then indications are joined for partial seizures with or without secondary generalization and neuropathic pains like diabetes mellitus, post herpetic neurology and apart from that this molecule is also used in complex regional pain syndrome and spinal cord injury and then fibromyalgia, this is a specific indication for this molecule. And restless leg syndrome, both the ways for both the molecules it is used. And those to be used, used is 150 to 600 mg OD oral. Then coming to the broad spectrum anti-epileptics. For every group of drugs in every chapter, try to remember wherever you get the broad spectrum molecules, that could be a question for either UGs and PGs especially pages again so broad spectrum antibiotics broad spectrum antivirals like that anything any group of molecule if a molecule if a group of molecules are having broad spectrum activity that could be a possible question so here we have broad spectrum anti-epileptics like lamotrigine lacosamide levetiracetam and then topiramate and zonisamide so they are useful in both focal and generalized seizures they are mainly used as add and drugs when compared to the conventional drugs. Okay, these drugs are a little bit uh, difficult to remember, but you need to revise it again and again. So Lamo trigin. So the mnemonic is TRI tri. So triple action it has got. So that is like blockade of sodium channels and then further excitotoxicity is inhibited. So going into the details, here you can see. So this is stimulus, repeated impacts of sodium ions, excessive glutamate and aspartate, excited amino acids release, and excessive stimulation leading to seizures. Whereas here, lamotrigine administration, so repeated impacts of sodium ions is blocked, sodium channels are blocked, reduced glutamate and aspartate release. So no seizures. So broad spectrum anti-epileptic. So whenever you get a molecule, broad spectrum anti-epileptic molecules, you start with the same, it is a broad spectrum anti-epileptic and then write down the multiple mechanisms of actions of that particular molecule and then go to the other details like pharmacokinetics area, indications and usage, okay? So it directly blocks voltage-gated sodium channels as well as N-type calcium channels and ultimately inhibits the release of excitatory neurotransmitter glutamate and this broad spectrum anti-epileptic effect. So one is sodium channel blockade and another is entire calcium channel blockade and leading effect is inhibition of glutamate and aspartate release. So triple effect. So trizine, lamo trizine. TRA tri means triple effect. Pharmacokinetics will absorb orally, metabolized by glucuronidation in the liver to inactive 2 and glucuronide, which is excreted in the urine. Half-life is 24 hours, which is one day, but reduced to 16 hours in patients receiving phenytoin carbamazepine or phenobarbital. And area, typical uh, hypersensitivity reaction giving rise to Stevens-Johnson Stevens syndrome, more common and severe in children below 16 years. And apart from that, this molecule paradoxically produces insomnia when compared to the other molecules which produce sedation. So this is the point that you have to note. Once this area is Stevens-Johnson syndrome and then insomnia. The dose is 100 to 300 milligrams per day in divided doses. Indications are partial seizures as monotherapy, generalized tonic-clonic seizures because this molecule is having broad spectrum anti-epileptic activity. So it is used in various conditions. And then secondary, generalized seizures, absent seizures, atomic seizures, myoclonic seizures in children and lennox gestalt syndrome. And non-epileptic uses are prophylaxis of mania, and differentiation pain because of membrane stabilizing action by blocking the sodium channels. And then bipolar disorder, it is used as an uh, adapter. 
in drug interactions, enzyme inducers like phenytoin and carbamazepine decrease, while enzyme inhibitors like valproic acid increase the half life of lamotrigine as usual. On the contrary, valproate inhibits glucuronidation of lamotrigine and doubles its blood plasma, plasma concentration. But valproate levels are lowered by lamotrigine. Lamotrigine lowers the uh, valproate concentration, whereas the valproate increases the concentration of uh, uh, half life of half life and further concentration of therapeutic effect of lamotrigine. The doses of lamotrigine should be reduced to half in patients taking valproate. So we need to reduce the dose because the concentration is blood plasma. I mean, plasma concentration is enhanced. So toxicity may be enhanced. So, however, metabolism of other anticonvulsants and oral contraceptives is not altered. Then, levetiracetam. So till now we have discussed about the Lamo tracking, tri means triple action that you can remember, and then uh, Stevenson Janssen syndrome. Then um, another thing is insomnia. Levoteracetam, M. M for many uh, aspects are discussed here with this molecule, broad spectrum anti epileptic agent. Advantages are perceived favorable adverse effect profile, broad therapeutic window, favorable pharmacokinetic properties, lack of drug to drug infections. Like that of all the newer anti epileptic molecules, it's very specific about having these particular advantages. So it is a pyracetam analog. Levoteracetam, pyracetam, spelling in the same way. So you can remember that way. Pyracetam analog. So that is like uh, developed to improve cognitive functions and its anti convulsant action was discovered by chance. Structurally related to the older nootropic drug, pyracetam. So the molecule has different actions like the here also triple actions. That is one is calcium channel blockade here and that calcium channel blockade and AMP receptor blockade because of which glutamate release is inhibited. And then it also inhibits uh, synaptic vesicular protein that is SP2A that which we have discussed even with the conventional drug molecules. Then pharmacokinetics nearly 100% oral bioavailability not bound to plasma proteins. And metabolism occurs in the blood. M4 metabolism is specific that occurs in the blood, not in the liver. Half life is six to eight hours. Two thirds of the drug is excreted and changed in the urine, and the remainder as an active deaminated metabolite to pyrolidine and butyric acid. If you can't remember the metabolites and also all these things, so please don't worry about it. The rest of the things you can mention. Elimination kinetics is linear, and hence drug interactions are minimal. Then behavioral and mood changes. M4, mood changes. Okay. So here what we have discussed this point, metabolism. And here, mood changes. So M4, metabolism in the blood and then mood changes. Like irritability, aggression, agitation, anger, anxiety, apathy, depression, emotional ability. So it is uh, to be administered on, if at all you administer this molecule, you need to monitor the patient for psychiatric disturbances very carefully. Dose is 500 mg twice daily, extended release tablets or IV administration is also available. Then another M is, it is a safe molecule during pregnancy, mothers, okay? That is another M. So the indications are partial seizures, generalized seizures like complex partial, tonic-clonic and myoclonic epilepsy, but not approved in children less than four years. And it is also used as an alternative to phosphenitoin or phenytoin in status epilepticals. So M4, multiple actions. So try triple, multiple actions. Then metabolism in blood. Then metabolite, specific metabolite is there. If you can remember, you can write that point also. And regarding area, mood changes, and it is safe in pregnancy. Levoteracetam. Then brevaracetam. Same, similar kind of actions and everything. High FNP, SP2A, that is uh, synaptic vesicular protein like it. Recently approved for the treatment of focal or partial onset seizures. Rapidly and completely absorbed after oral, oral administration. Half life is seven to eight hours. So, BD administration and lower plasma protein binding. Linear pharmacokinetics. Then, dose to be given is 10 to 600 mg single oral dose. Sometimes can be given divided into two doses per day. Metabolized by both hydrolysis and CYP2C90, minor metabolism. Drug interactions when rivaracetam is combined with carbamazepine, increased exposure to carbamazepine epoxide. So carbamazepine metabolism is enhanced. 
that is the active metabolite of carbamazepine, that is carbamazepine epoxide, possibly leading to adverse effects of carbamazepine. So dose reduction of carbamazepine needs to be done when you combine that molecule with rivaracetam. When you combine with phenytoin, increase phenytoin levels. Again, then co-administration of other anti cz drugs is unlikely to affect rivaracetam exposure. So it affects other molecules, but it will not get affected by other anti-epileptic drugs. It provides no added therapeutic benefit when administered in conjunction with levetiracetam because both have same kind of features. Then coming to the topiramate. So this topiramate molecule, when I was doing PG, that time this molecule has been released and research was being done in, during that time. And I have uh, delivered a journal club. I have presented this molecule in my journal club while doing my post-graduation. Topiramate for the treatment of epilepsy. I still remember that. So the molecule mechanism of action is, it acts similarly like that of phenytoin. It acts by maintaining the inactivated state of sodium channels, facilitates GABA action by acting at a site other than benzodiazepines and barbiturates, and blocks excitatory action of kinase or AMP receptors. So all these three we know, right? When compared to the phenytoin, and apart from that, it is a weak inhibitor of carbonic anhydrase isoenzymes, number two and number four specifically. So inhibits brain carbonic anhydrase enzyme. So because of which there is a possibility of metabolic acidosis as a side effect. Then topiramate mechanism of action. So we can see here calcium channel blockade, sodium channel blockade, and then GABA receptor inhibition, and then AMP excited toxicity is inhibited through blockade of kinate or AMP receptors. Then pharmacokinetics, 80% bioavailability and food does not affect absorption. Uh, less amount of plasma protein binding and major amount is excreted and changed in urine. 20 to 40% is metabolized without any active metabolites. Half-life is 20 to 30 hours. May be increased in hepatic failure or renal failure cases. And it does not cause enzyme induction, but it reduces the concentration of oral contraceptives. So it is not advisable in the uh, young couple, like egg mother, I mean, egg ladies who want to go for pregnancy. Okay. Then, IDR, uh, sedation, dizziness, fatigue, cognitive slowing, etc., along with that amnesia and paresthesia and urolithiosis. This is the peculiar side effect with topiramide molecule, okay? Because it also inhibits carbonic anhydrase enzyme. So, in some patients, carbonic anhydrase enzyme inhibition is associated with reduced serum bicarbonate, that is usually asymptomatic. But sometimes it can give rise to non specific symptoms like fatigue, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, etc. And apart from that, it also gives rise to oligohydrosis, that is decreased sweating and elevation in body temperature that may occur during exposure to hot weather, mostly in case of children. So, long term topiramate therapy can give rise to weight loss. Till now, we have discussed about the weight gain of the molecules. Topiramate gives rise to weight loss. Apart from that, acute myopia and glaucoma, and then cognitive side effects. That is like impaired excessive language, language dysfunction, dysnomia and diminished verbal fluency, impaired verbal memory, and general slowing of cognitive processing. And it is also a teratogenic molecule, so not to be administered for pregnant ladies. Then uh, hydramnios can give rise to specific uh, teratogenic effects like hydramnios and oral cleft in neurons. And along with that, specifically hypospadias in male infants. Indications are generalized tonic clonic seizures, partial seizures, absence seizures, juvenile myoclonic epilepsy, infantile spasms, Lennox Gustav syndrome, West syndrome, Dravet syndrome, the severe myoclonic epilepsy in infants. Non epileptic uses you can have the mnemonic that is MAVO, mono amino acid enzyme. So M for migraine prophylaxis, A for anti craving drug in a, uh, addiction with alcohol, nicotine, and cocaine, and O for obesity. Dose is 300 to 600 milligrams per day only in divided doses. So, topiramate, then diademonic, that is BCG vaccine, and MPP, MPP means medical termination of pregnancy. And wow, you can remember in place of V, you can keep U, U O double. So, B for body temperature is enhanced with a side effect, and C for 
carbonic anhydrase enzyme inhibition and cognitive side effects and G for glaucoma, M for metabolic acidosis and myopia, T for teratogenicity, and P for paresthesia and peritoin similarity, and U for urolithiasis, O for oligohydrosis, and W for weight loss, that is a specific drug effect. Then coming to the zonisamide, it has the similar features like the the pyramid, so you can write the entire thing same, apart from the, the characteristic features that I'm mentioning here in this slide. Contains sulfur. Zonisamide is a sulfonamide, whereas topiramide contains the same sulfonamide structure, but it strictly is sulfamate. It is a sulfonamide that is sulfamate. Similar pharmacological actions, including carbonic anhydrase inhibition, like, a, like the tafasitazolamide, which is also a sulfonamide. Then the area are same, like weight loss, oligohydrosis, renal stones, that is urealic acids, etc. Whether these actions are related to the common sulfonamide structure, that is not known. Mechanism of action, broad spectrum anticonvulsant activity having multiple actions. So sodium channel blockade, calcium channel blockade, and inhibition of carbonic anhydrase enzyme. Good bioavailability, linear pharmacokinetics, and negligible protein binding, renal expression. Longer half-life, zonisamide. So Z is the last letter among the alphabets. So long half-life, so one to three days. Drug is extensively metabolized by acetylation to form n zonisamide, which is excreted in the urine unchanged and uh, C by CYP3A4 to form 2 sulfamoyl acetyl phenyl, which is excreted as glucuronide. Then area, same like that of the other molecule. So apart from that, weight loss, the weight loss is also seen there and cognitive impairment and urolithiasis, metabolic acidosis, and oligohydrosis, and increased body temperature. Indications, partial seizures, generalized tonic-clonic seizures, atypical absence seizures, myoclonic seizures, infantile spasms, and lennox gestalt syndrome. And contraindications, because these molecules have structural similarity with that of the sulfonamides, so patients who are sensitive to sulfonamides are carbonic anhydrase inhibitor sensitivity, we need to contraindicate these molecules. 100 to 600, 600 mg per day orally in two or three equally divided doses is the dose. Drug interactions, no clinically significant effects with the other anti seizure drugs. But anti seizure drugs like carbamazepine, phenytoin, and phenobarbital that induce CYP3F4, they increase the clearance of zonisamide, so increase metabolism, shortening its half life. Concomitant use with the CYP3F4 inducing agents may therefore require increased dose of the zonisamide. No drug interactions further. Then lacosamide molecule. Mechanism of action is it is related with the amino acid serine. And it, this is specific action this lacosamide molecule is having. It acts by inhibiting voltage gated sodium channels and by blocking effect of brain derived neurotrophic factor, factor. And then collapsing response mediator protein CRMP2. Okay, this is the specific action this molecule is having. Well absorbed orally, 100% bioavailability. All these drugs are having oral administration, but at high bioavailability. That is a very important point to be noted. Half-life 13 hours and plasma protein binding is negligible. Orally and IV formulation is also available. Metabolized in the liver, 30% expression unchanged, no active metabolites. Protein binding is minimal. minimal. And then uh, lacosamide does not induce or inhibit cytochrome P450 enzyme, so drug interactions are minimal. Area, mild, that is like all uh, headache, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, fatigue, raxia, sedation, depression, tremor, diplopia, and prolongation. Specifically, this one diplopia, prolongation of PR interval, and cardiac arrhythmias. Uses are partial seizures and secondary generalized seizures. Dose is 100 to 400 mg daily in two divided doses. So we have here oral formulation and IV formulation with this molecule. So intravenous formulation provides short-term replacement for the oral drug. But the oral solution contains aspartame, that is the molecule that is having, which is a source of phenylalanine. So oral solution, which contains aspartame, releases phenylalanine, so which can be harmful in patients suffering from penile ketonuria, so to be contraindicated in those patients. Dandrofenamide, R and F, what are these? Let us see. 
acts by enhancing slow inactivation of voltage gated sodium channels. High doses, it may have an inhibitory effect on metabotropic glutamate subtype 5 receptor. And, all, and as a result, shown an anti epileptic clinical profile similar to felbamate. F for felbamate, rufinamide, felbamate similarity. Orally, the drug is absorbed dose dependently, metabolized in the liver, half life 6 to 10 hours, excreted in urine, acid metabolized upon for two thirds of the dose. And the weak inhibitor of CYP2E1 and weak inducer of CYP3A4. So both the actions it is having. And food enhances the absorption. Till now, all the molecules, food is going to uh, interfere with the absorption of the molecule. But here, with this rupinamide molecule, food enhances the absorption. Okay. So F for felbamate similarity and F for food enhancing the absorption. And it is used in the refractory epilepsy because of the toxic side effects. Okay. So because that is like prolonged <coughs> potential for shortened QT intervals. That is the most dreadful side effect. Then indications, focal seizures, atonic seizures in Lennox Crestor syndrome in children above four years. And the dose to be given is 200 to 400 mg per dose. That is rufinamide molecule. Drug interactions, most drug to drug interactions are minor, except that valparate may decrease the clearance. So, enhanced the concentration of rufinamide, which requires the reduction of the dosage. And carbamazepine and phenytoin can reduce, and valparate can increase the serum concentrations of rufinamide. Then, reticabine <coughs> or ezogabine. So, two names are both are the same. So, synonyms. Reticabine, so US adopted name is ezogabine. It is a potassium channel opener. This is a very peculiar molecule. Okay. Third line treatment for focal seizures because reticabine causes pigment discoloration of the retina or for retinal pigment discoloration. So, that's why I have made a different color for RE. So, pigment discoloration of retina as well as skin is seen with this molecule. So, its use is limited to those who have failed to respond to other agents. So only used for resistant varieties of epilepsy because of this uh, discouraging ADR. Mechanism of action, allosteric opener of voltage-gated potassium channels in axons and nerve terminals. So opening potassium channels in pre-synaptic terminals inhibits the release of various neurotransmitters, including glutamate, which may be responsible for seizure protection. So R for retinal pigment discoloration and also skin discoloration. Then absorption is not affected by food. Kinetics are linear. Drug interactions are minimal. Metabolic, uh, metabolism is to end glucuronidation and end acetylation. The drug neither inhibits nor induces the CYP enzymes. ADR, blurred vision, apart from the other side effects like dizziness, somnolence, fatigue, confusion, vertigo, tremors, disturbances in gait, attention, memory, and the specific area here is blurred vision. Okay, so that's why I elongated this E letter. So E for eye related side effects, that is blurred vision. Okay, R for retinal pigment discoloration and skin pigment discoloration also. Then dysarthria and euphoria, weight gain, psychotic symptoms, QTC interval prolongation, and suicidal tendencies, that is psychotic symptoms. Then uh, when administered concomitantly with phenytoin or carbamazepine, serum concentration decreases. Then urinary symptoms also it gives rise to, including retention, hesitation, and dysuria. So urine. So R for urine, you can remember. And believed to be due to the effects of the drug and potassium channels in the dead reserves, smooth muscle. So potassium channel opener. So urinary symptoms, eye related blurred vision, and then retinal pigment and skin discoloration. So discoloration means specifically it gives rise to blue pigmentation, primarily on the skin, lips, palate, sclera, and then conjunctiva. Blue conjunctiva the patient may land upon. Even in case of COVID, we have seen one case where uh, that uh, particular area has been uh, uh, circulated in parts of having blue sclera and conjunctiva. So, like that. In addition, however, retinal pigment abnormalities can occur independent of skin changes of particular concern. Post-marketing reports of fourth phase, 
that is uh, for phase of clinical study there are reports of macular abnormalities characterized as vitelliform lesions such as those seen in macular degeneration or dystrophy and decreased visual acuity of course used in used in focal seizures as adjunctive therapy and dose is 600 to 1200 mg per day then param panel mechanism of action is first non competitive antagonist of post synaptic amba receptor so it reduces the glutamate induced generation neuronal firing up it is blocking so that's how it produces its anti epileptic action then regarding the pharmacokinetics absorption is rapid that is fully bioavailable all the food slows the rate of absorption the extent is not affected it 95% bound to plasma proteins and uh, metabolism by oxidation and glucuronidation half life is 7 to 10 hours for day administration so because of long half life the dose titration of the drug should be done at weekly intervals unless the drug is given with phenytoin and carbamazepine that shorten the half life of perampenic lower doses are needed in patients with liver disease and the drug is not recommended in severe hepatic or renal impairment so both in users that is phenytoin and carbamazepine and inhibitors valproic acid ketoconazole may have significant significant drug interactions with parampenem molecule so p4 here provocation of psychiatric problems parampenem p4 psychiatric problems and along with that all the other side effects are similar along with blurred vision so psychiatric problems like hostility aggression irritability anger and suicidalization we can see in the patients frequency of these adr increases in a dose dependent fashion so more often in younger patients and those with learning disabilities or dementia and if the patient takes alcohol along with parampenem these uh, psychiatric symptoms may get exaggerated so there is falls are more common at higher doses high dose that is uh, here it is uh, 120 mg per day this two is uh, wrongly uh, exhibited there so altered gait it can give rise to ataxia and then a balance disorder and therefore the drug should be given cautiously in elderly patients as it is a new drug it is not recommended in pregnancy and it is also not known if the drug is secreted in breast milk not recommended in patients with severe renal or hepatic impairment so high dose means here 120 mg per day okay indications focal seizures with or without secondary generalized seizures that is adjunct therapy primary generalized uh, tonic clonic uh, seizures in idiopathic uh, generalized epilepsy and not recommended for children less than 5 years routine dose to be given is 4 to 12 mg then drug interactions concomitant use with potency by p3a4 inducer that is antacids the drugs like carbamazepine oxcarbazepine phenytoin they decrease the clearance of parampenem so we need to uh, change the dosage of the molecules then the strong c3a4 inhibitors increase the levels of parampenem then parampenem may decrease the effectiveness of levonorgestrel containing hormonal contraceptives so we need to be careful while prescribing mothers who want to become pregnant then uh, carbonic anhydrase inhibitors mechanism of action these are the enzymes carbonic anhydrase are enzymes that catalyze the interconversion between carbon dioxide and bicarbonate so inhibitors of carbonic anhydrase is particularly the cyclosolic forms that is ca2 and 7 Two and seven inhibition only can give rise to anti-epileptic activity, not the other things. Prototypical carbonic anhydrase inhibitor is a sulfonamide, a spuzolamide, which has broad spectrum anti-epileptic activity. But because of the carbonic anhydrase enzyme inhibition, so it can also give rise to uh, metabolic acidosis. Dose is ten milligrams per kg per day to maximum of thousand milligrams per day. uses rarely used for chronic therapy because of its uh, tolerance development when used for a long period of time so with return of seizures usually within a few weeks so because of the tolerance the patient may manifest again the epileptic uh, symptoms so it is because of the side effect tolerance it is not used for a chronic therapy but it can be used for a short period of time that is in case of catamenial epilepsy 
Ketamineal epilepsy means epilep epileptic seizures happening during the period of menstruation. So that is that happens only once in a month, but also for a few days. So this molecule can be used for that particular condition because we're not going to use it for a chronic period of uh, time. So tolerance is not a problem in that case. The dose to be given is 5 to 10 milligrams per kg per day, maximum up to 1000 milligrams per day, and it has to be given for one week or 10 days before the menstrual cycle till the menses completes. Then it is also indicated for resistant petit mal and grand mal epilepsies as an adjunct therapy and focal and generalized tonic-clonic seizures and especially generalized absence seizures. Then sulthaya. This is another sulfonamide carbonic anhydrase inhibitor used in uh, as for sulfonamide. You need to remember like that. Used for focal, focal seizures, benign focal epilepsy with the central temporal spikes and infantile spasms. Then felbamate. So we discussed about the other molecule having the felbamate, rufinamide having felbamate similarity. So felbamate is a dicarbamate, structurally related to the sedative hypnotic, that is meprobamate. There's a wider spectrum of anti-epileptic action, yet not popular because of its unpredictable toxicity. Mechanism of action is blockage of voltage gated sodium channels and blockage of NMDA receptors that express NR to be subunit by antagonism at glycine cytoplasmic. Okay, both sodium channels inhibition and NMDA blockaders. Since NMDA receptor with NR to be subunit are localized only in certain parts of the brain, so this molecule produces selective anticonvulsant activity without any behavioral adverse effects. So this is the main advantage with this molecule. Okay. One more. Yeah. Then coming to the pharmacokinetics, oral felbamate is well absorbed. 30 to 50% is excreted unchanged in the urine. Uh, metabolism through CYP3A4 and CYP2E1. And main terminal half-life of 20 hours in monotherapy decreases to 13 to 14 hours in the presence of phenytoin or carbamazepine, which are enzyme inducers. ADR, apart from the other side effects, insomnia, this molecule also produces. And unpredictable toxic side effects like fatal aplastic anemia and hepatotoxicity, because of which this is not used routinely, except for refractory or resistant seizures. Indications, drug refractory epilepsy, such as Lennox, Dettard syndrome, and atonic seizures, atypical absence seizures, partial seizures, generalized tonic-clonic seizures. So the dose to be given is 400 mg three times a day, and slowly escalating up to a level of 3,600 milligrams per day. Okay. Drug interactions, felbamate decreases the clearance of phenytoin and valproic acid and increases their blood levels. Those reductions of these drugs may be necessary uh, when felbamate is initiated. It also reduces the levels of carbamazepine but increases the levels of metabolite carbamazepine epoxide. That's what we discussed earlier also. Same, uh, uh, same kind of effects this molecule also produces, which may be associated with adverse effects like diplopia, dizziness, and headache. Trimethodion, that is an oxazolidine dion anti seizure drug. Dion, dion, trimethodion, oxazolidine, dion. Numerous dose related and idiosyncratic side effects like hemerylopia, that is day blindness. Dion, D for day blindness. You can remember that way. <clears throat> because of the high propensity for side effects, this is this and other related oxazolidine dions, paramethodion and dimethodion. The major metabolite of trimethodion, they are now rarely used. Day blindness means the patient cannot work. So that is a very difficult problem. So they are not used nowadays. And previously, they do have, they did have the indication, indication like generalized absence seizures, which was like a drug of choice until the introduction of fluoxetine. So now this molecule is no more used. So you'll not get a question, except uh, day blindness, the molecule which produces day blindness and the epileptic drug that is trimethodione in virology. You may be asked. Then steripentol, all pentol. Alcohol. Steripentol is an aromatic allylic alcohol. Mechanism of action. The drug has various actions on GABA-mediated neurotransmission, including acting as a positive allosteric modulator of GABA receptors. 
exhibits non-linear pharmacokinetics, decrease in clearance, and as the dose increases, inhibitor of CYP3A4, 1A2, and 2C90, increases the levels of clobazam and its active metabolite, not clobazam, also inhibits valproate metabolism. Remember, this is like enzyme induction or inhibition. So there is like a CYP2C19. It is a very commonly asked question, whether it is for theory or viva for postgraduate students. Then area, apart from the other routine manifestations, this molecule also produces diplopia, okay? Used in Dravet syndrome, so D and D. Used in conjunction with clobazam or vaporate, dose is 10 milligrams per kg per day and is increased gradually. Then the last one is, so till now we have discussed about the earlier session, conventional anti-epileptic drugs and today's session, uh, newer anti-epileptic drugs and this one is anti-epileptic drugs under development. So this may be asked for uh, postgraduate students. So that's why I have shown uh, two slides I think here. So allopregnanolone for status epilepticus, cannabidiol for epileptic encephalopathies and focal seizures, cannabidivarin for focal seizures, cenobamate for focal seizures, penchloramine for Dravet syndrome, and genoxalone for status epilepticus and rare epilepsy syndromes, and intranasal metazolam. Please remember, routes of administration of various anti-epileptic drugs can be a viva question for postgraduate students and two marks question for UG students. Intranasal metazolam for acute repetitive seizures, that is like cluster C, seizure clusters we can see. Then staccato, that is thermal aerosol inhaled, alprazolam for acute repetitive seizures again, okay? and steripentol for Dravet syndrome. That's it. So these are the newer uh, anti epileptic drugs under development. So thank you. Thank you for patient listening. So this is all about uh, the newer anti-epileptic that is the third session. And in fourth session, I'm going to discuss something about the prescribing guidelines and various types of epilepsy management. So don't keep pending all the sessions. You may have uh, uh, first internal assessment at any time. So go through all the sessions. So if you can't understand the introduction session, then all the rest of the sessions, it will become a little bit tough for you. So go through all the sessions and prepare for your uh, own notes, okay? Thank you. Thank you.